Hi there guys, all the game builders, all the game makers, let's talk about genre. In this second episode of Game Basics, we are focused on game genre. We're going to see where is the revenue coming in terms of different genres. We're going to see the mobile side, PC side, console side. We're also going to dive deep in the mobile side and we're going to review where is the, the most genre penetration, uh, what are the subcategories and how that relates to the user retention. We're going to see uh, some uh, development problems and what are developers complaining about. We're going to focus on revenue per active user and see how that pl uh, plays a role. And uh, we have uh, estimate time spent all in games depending on genre. So this is going to be so excited. After the break, we dive into the numbers. Welcome back. Let's dive in and see where are the money coming from. What genre is the most profitable one? Actually, which genre has the most uh, capabilities to make most money? So uh, this is the breakdown. The first one is uh, action adventure kind of games, uh, arcade, puzzle, trivia, strategy, racing. Those would be the some. Of the, uh, those would be top five genres that are making money. Now, of course, we have simulation, sports, educational, casual, RPG, music, and uh, horror kind of games. Uh, you notice that here we didn't include um, multiplayer PC games. They're very famous, like Dot and League of uh, Legends, uh, similar games. They're all kind of... Um, action adventure strategy mixes and they are in, in different area they could have their special special category but that's not what we are uh, going to do we're going to keep them in traditional ways because this is how the industry is measured from our standpoint of view and the, from the, the way we collect data <clears throat> so let's go quickly to the next and see the mobile side uh, as you can see in the mobile side the iOS is currently producing more revenue overall in the, in the mobile industry but uh, Android is catching up very quickly like a few years uh, ago the Android was half now the Android is almost there so they're they're racing and it's very close the race is very close um, if you go go even um, higher on on here you can see arcade games are kind of same iOS and Android you can see that Android is very little behind on puzzle and trivia. Strategy is the same. The, 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 it's very close. These, these are getting very close. If you have watched these kind of reports year after year, you see that iOS once was so high and uh, Android was so little in terms of revenue. But now things are changing. Uh, probably because the, the Android surpassed iPhone almost double by the number of active devices. And that is definitely going to affect, since we are going even further, even more Android devices are going to be out there. That means uh, uh, in one moment, the Android is going to surpass uh, uh, iPhone. Uh, it's very clear, uh, Android can be um, plugged into many different phones that are manufactured. The iOS is only for iPhones. And if, if you can see that there are some uh, simulations, some sports, educationally but when we come to the casual gaming and RPG music and horror that's simply not a market with many uh, juices for all of you who are building games so there are very few games that are making any money now let's jump to the to the PC side uh, and uh, as you can see in the PC side for the revenue the most money here was made on Windows by arcade games. The arcade games are still so famous. Now, this includes both web apps, this includes, oh, oh, oh sorry, web apps, web games, and all kind of games. And uh, you see that here on PC, actually, uh, there's so many revenue sources for all kind of games. The PC uh, gaming industry is very matured. Now, when it comes to newly games that are made for Mac, they're catching up to PC, both or horror, RPG, casual and educational kind of uh, games. There are not so many, the, the, there are, these days there are so many apps that uh, 
proclaim themselves like educational apps, like casual, ga uh, casual game apps, who are also taking this part of the market. That's why it's very close one to each other. This is taken from many, many different reports and put into one big report that I'm reading to you now. This we have like maybe 50 agencies or 50 different sources who did report. So we restructured this one. Uh, and by all of them, this is how, how it looks. Now you can see that uh, 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 music and sports are so, so little. Why? Because even though we have um, some small data, there's really very few games that are making money in, in this genre. Very few. So if you're thinking about some of these games, think twice. Um, and finally, I want to talk about console, console games that are also um, very, very good in terms of action, adventure, arcade, puzzle, strategy, racing, and there are some uh, that, that do good simulation, but after you go from the sport, there are very simply so little. There are a few music apps that make some money, but um, uh, maybe a few horror games that made some buck, but not much. So if you were uh, expecting to build a game for console now these days, that's mostly these three first five categories where you can find some, some useful, uh, uh, sorry, you can find some good game uh, that could potentially have life. That means you could earn mo some money back. Okay, uh, th that was some overall idea about the revenue, how much is coming from where, so you can compare by yourself. The whole industry, like the last time we talked, is uh, now surpassed one, $120 billion. It's expected to be 140 by the end of 2018. Uh, and uh, in the, after, after the break, we are going to dive in the mobile side of the business where you really can see some specific data and where you really can get a better sense of what's going on. Hi there guys, welcome back. Let's dive into the second part of this uh, interesting uh, episode when we are going to review some specific data from Asia. Now I'm gonna focus on the market in Asia and bring you a little closer so you can see how this market work. Now this is done by guys uh, at Go Globe. Um, they do some uh, research about games and um, from what I can see, that uh, their report makes sense only if it uh, considers Asian market. Why? Because you know, if you take a global market, this data would not fit in to what we have from all other sources that we're getting. Because we have aggregation of the data that I just showed you uh, before, but this data is very close to the Asian data that we have. So let's go and, and uh, see together what kind of games are working in Asia mostly. Like we said, they have a statistic and trends for mobile games that are getting now 51%. Console games are on 25 and PC games are on 24. This is exactly what we have for the global uh, data, very similar to that one. Now there are predictions that the overall industry will grow by 2021 to 59%, which I think is gonna grow even more. Um, interesting, interesting point from their side. They're saying that 25% of all apps in uh, iOS store have some kind of gamification. Now this is getting very popular. Many people are building uh, interesting apps that have some kind of gamification inside because it's easier to make revenue. It's easier to get players uh, uh, to become loyal fans and followers and, and to engage with your app. Now. Android has 21% in this market, but um, what is so interesting is that all the research I have done, I was not able to find enough data and to cover all the games. Uh, full disclosure, I'm an uh, early investor and supporter in a dating gamified app called Vivas that's very popular in Southeast Asia. Uh, you guessed, people like dating and like playing games. Um, so that's interesting, uh, but I'm so uh, surprised by this kind of metrics because this is really hard to calculate and I'm really curious how they did it. Uh, also, also one uh, interesting point that they're bringing here is that um, 
owners install a game, uh, 60 62% of the owners install a game within a week when they buy a, smart, a smartphone. This is a really big discovery. Uh, uh, for a region like Asia, this is 100% correct. The, here, people have a couple of games in their phone and they're playing them constantly. So, uh, in a market like that, it's very obvious that if you take those uh, gamified apps and put them together with the games, you get numbers like this. 43 of the total time spent on mobile phone is spent on gaming. That's Asia, guys. So if you're building a game, welcome to Asian market. Also something important for, for all of you looking at the Asian market. By their report, 78% of all revenue coming in the gaming uh, industry, in the mobile gaming industry is coming from Android uh, devices. That means that if you are making an uh, uh, Android game for Asian market, you're on the right track. iOS is good too. I cannot complain anything about iOS. Uh, uh, I'm getting the, um, the similar numbers when I'm doing the math for Asia, but um, 78 is a little higher at this moment, but I could agree uh, depending how they calculate uh, their numbers. Now, also something very important for you to, to know is um, penetration combined with the genre, genre, which genre are getting more penetration in the market. And um, puzzles are definitely the one that had, have, have good penetration because uh, puzzle games are interesting. It's always nice to see somebody solving some puzzle, doing some thinking. Um, in, in Asia, both culturally and because of um, like competition, people like to compete with the, the puzzle games here a lot. They have many different Asian puzzle games that people in the Western world have never heard of. Uh, so <clears throat> here it's clear why penetration on puzzle game is so high, uh, arcade games as well, and followed by action games and so on. You can see here uh, from the research. Now I want to look at another metric that's also important for all of you building apps. Now this doesn't mean you are building um, for Asian market or for any other market, but uh, you can see that user retention is very important. Why? Because if you have a good user retention, it means you have long value, uh, 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 additional value from each user. And uh, iOS is leading with a puzzle, uh, Android with uh, adventure. But one very interesting thing is iOS don't have very good adventure apps. You know, see, they don't have even uh, in the top five any um, strategy app. Also, no uh, uh, arcade game are the, the on the fifth place. Role playing is gone. So, you know, you should definitely take a look at this if you're building an app and find out what kind of app you're looking. If you were about to build adventure app and you were, or you were thinking about building a strategy app, even the role playing app, your first platform should not be iOS. Get it on Android and then find out uh, what the market says about it. That would be my first move. Now let's see what are the mobile uh, game the developers uh, complaining about. Like what are their challenges? <clears throat> Number one is competition. That's that's so obvious. Uh, the market has become so tough, especially if you're talking about user acquisition. Getting user acquisition is so hard that uh, people are complaining right after competition to the rising acquisition cost. It's so hard. And uh, the rising marketing costs are just like in the same boat. Then amount of free content. Uh, there are so many apps free to play. There are so many people doing different kind of videos, reviews for everything, uh, talking about games, there are so many games, websites, things like that. So it's very hard uh, for a single game to get published and then to get some market share. It's really a, a hard work. And um, final one the people are the, the complaining is rising development cost. That's why you should think very clearly and be very straightforward with what kind of game you want to make and what kind of outcome you want to get when you're building and designing your game. If you want your game to have life 
and have a lot of players and produce revenue so you can keep maintaining the game and improving it and bringing features and new versions and so forth so and so on uh, you need to think about clear path to your uh, tomorrow's user acquisition strategy and, and other things another point that i want to make here is uh, full disclosure i'm uh, 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 one of the founding uh, team members in a company called uh, enjoy enjoy global we bring a free user acquisition solution to all the mobile game companies so if you're in mobile game industry i suggest you guys uh, reach out to enjoy to see how they can help you get some free users it's always a good thing um, no, I'm expecting them to start advertising with us and supporting us on this channel and I hope it will uh, start sometime soon because they really have a good product and I'm so happy to be part of that company. Uh, now let, let's take a look at the revenue per active user uh, through different uh, uh, genres. Now the highest paying uh, um, active user by genre is role playing. Um, in, in Asia, role-playing has a completely different approach. I, I'm not sure exactly how they calculate this data again, because uh, role-playing games usually take a lot of time when, when people are playing them. And adventure games as well. So it's very clear that they are so much higher than the strategy game. And the final one that I have here is estimated time spent by mobile game genre. That means how much time actually people spend inside of the game uh, when they are playing. Now you see the puzzle game has by far 105 minutes because most of the game are, are related to thinking and people have some problem and they just are thinking and they leave their phone like this and they are just looking at the screen for hours uh, trying to find some solution or trying many times going the same level playing for many 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 times they're playing the same level and for them it's not challenge to purchase something to go through the that level for them challenge is to beat the level and the best way to earn money for puzzle games is through advertisement even everybody are pushing in game purchases for puzzle games the second one is casual gaming casual gaming is a very broad category very broad category there are some games that really take a lot of time especially when you have a casual gaming like a subcategory in some dating apps like i mentioned or some other apps it's really a very big uh, part and uh, like you can see here i'm just checking another one metrics that uh, uh board games card games and uh, uh, role-playing games also take uh, are taking a lot of time and the final one is action action games have become very quick and efficient they make most money they don't take the most time anymore so people just join play they spend mostly there on uh, in-app purchases when they are buying some virtual goods <clears throat> that, that was all from this report from go go global go globe guys um, Thank, thank, I, I want to thank them this way for putting up this uh, nice interesting uh, report for all of us to see and discuss about it. If you have any questions or you, you want to know more about uh, uh, what we do here in uh, uh, Game Buzz, you're welcome to reach out to us and uh, we'll come back to you. Our mission is to help and support everybody who is building games and if you are building game or you're a game publisher or you're in game industry we would like to know you so don't be shy reach out to us and uh, let's have fun enjoy guys think smart when you're designing games and make sure your game can make some revenue because if it can make revenue that means it has life take care and see you in the next show